I ain't yeah. got no fancy introduction, so do your thing, homeboy. No, no, no. We're just gonna go right into it, bro. We're just gonna go right into it. We're gonna go right oh, into right. you know, uh, you know, dog breeding, the med, you know, uh all the stuff that me and you enjoy talking about and doing it's just gonna be like a regular conversation you know two breeders have been doing this for a really long time giving information free to the world episode is sponsored by the beast of the east dog show come join us and see some of the best dogs in the country meet world-renowned breeders there's going to be working events two abkc sanctioned shows and so much more november 4th 2023 at 10 3000 courthouse road chesterfield virginia don't miss the event of the year we'll see you there so anyway bro yeah man so i've been i'm so glad that we've been able to do this man like finally get behind the screen and like it's crazy because i know me and you probably take for granted every single day we talk about stuff like this over the phone but i know breeders all over the world would be would love to be able to just listen in on our conversations and hear about what me and you talk about just on a day-to-day -day basis we take it for granted because it's just common knowledge because it comes, yeah it, it, we consider it common knowledge or it's second nature you know? yeah like yeah. when do you worm puppies like every two weeks bro like you know what i mean where the legitimately they don't know the answer yeah, and, you know, yeah. I, i'm not saying it to be rude you're just it's just like well, okay well every two weeks you know what i mean it's kind of easy but like like we've talked about there's just certain things that the better our education level gets uh we forget the stuff that we learned in the beginning you know what i mean yeah and it's it's almost like i i enjoy when people ask us questions because then it's almost like it makes me rethink some of the content that needs to come out and i just think when they ask questions it it almost sometimes gives me a better understanding of things because sometimes i'm like oh wait i didn't think of it like that well what if this happened you know like or whatever the case may be steel sharpens steel and i'm not trying to be disrespectful of the other people but i can't talk to someone who just started breeding two days ago or two years ago and ask them hey i have a dog with one testicle descendant hey do you know any you know any hacks yeah, is there a way to make this testicle defend? Yeah, you know, you can use your Naturel. I mean, yeah. you see what I'm mean? like now with this platform, we can help the people that were here where it's where we once were, you know what I mean? And that's how we came together, you and I, you know what I mean? Your education level is there. I enjoyed the conversation. It wasn't just like oh, another guy calling me, not to be rude, it's like, bro, I have a really busy life, and it's like dude i understand listen just give the dog a shot of this but why how much what how often and i'm just like bro it tells you all that in the plums. i gave you the information look at the plums what's the plums and i'm just like bro <laughs> now with you i didn't have to do any of that and it was it came easier you know what i'm saying like hey man i got a dog with this all right cool that's we would just use this you know what i mean 100 percent. i think it was like a digital sis or something like that you know yeah, it's like yeah. that's easy just give them some you know something you know what i mean that, and that's where me and you we mesh well together because our education level is, is is comparable you know there's things where you know a little bit more and there's things where i know a little bit more and we help each other grow you know what i mean 100 percent. and yeah exactly what you said like like you know that whole analogy of iron sharp, sharpens iron and so on and so forth where yeah like it's it's i guess that's how we kind of came together so to give everybody a quick origin story of how um, the dog breeding chronicles came about was the fact that, um, yeah, I mean, Chris was already doing his own thing. Obviously, um, I was doing my own thing. And it was like, um, I guess the powers that be allowed us to have that one interaction. But that's all it took for that mental stimulation to be like when we when we spoke on the phone, it was like, wow, like this is really um you know, uh, mentally stimulating as far as the, the the conversations that we would engage in. So uh, we went on to become really good friends. And I mean, we both have a, a really solid knowledge base when it comes to dog breeding. So then the conversation came about, hey, like these conversations that we have over the phone, we can't just keep them to ourselves. Let's jump on a podcast. Let's start, you know, having these conversations behind the camera so that then, um, you know, breeders like ourselves or even newer breeders, whatever the case may be, any breeder can jump on 
and and listen in to some really mentally stimulating conversation when it comes to dog breeding all around you know um and i think that pretty much like that pretty much sums it up right like fast forward to now yeah i mean that's the perfect i mean like i just got a phone call this morning and i and we can me and you can have a conversation because we've had this conversation before in okay. regards to females who pool you know oh, when they pool yeah. all the blood and that's a really big thing i would imagine in like english bulldogs your world you know short oh, yeah. thick dogs French and like i was and like I was telling him, like, hey, you have options. Option one is you can do a surgical because you bypass that pool of blood by going right into the the, the ovaries. You know what I mean? You bypass all that. Uh, the other thing is, is you can pull the blood out. Uh, in large animals, they do inseminations of penicillin or Batrim. You know what I mean? I told him that. I said, look, in large animals, this is what they do. Uh, yeah. You can instead of if you're if you're scared to use uh penicillin as an ai you know just think of this as i mean this is a general com a genuine conversation that me and you have had yeah, yeah. you can use extender extender with antibiotics it has genomycin and penicillin in it so you can flush her out with that and let it all come back out yeah. and then do another ai i mean yeah what I, like i did a video on this and like this was before i knew about it because i think we actually yeah we had this conversation about this tech this particular technique and it was yeah. the fact of like so uh, a lot of people know that I did an episode where I did an AI and we like pulled out the, the blood, but you can actually also, which I'm finding works very, very well, is AI her and then push air in and it forces, it creates that, uh, that uh, it's like siphoning gas and it causes yeah. the blood to come right back out. You know, you put a cup and that AI rod is sitting in, right in there and just let all that blood drain. And then obviously, yeah, let's AI or with some penicillin or I like, you know, you just use some extender or whatever the case it may be. Try to yeah, get with that. extender with antibiotics. There's extender with and without. So you need to. Yeah. Work well, I think across the board, I mean, I think everyone should be really using an extender with an antibiotic. I mean, at least from every, everyone that I deal with, they always use like an uh, extender with antibiotic. I, I don't I, even. I totally agree. But if that, if you don't have it, it's not yeah, like yeah. it. Yeah. It's not like a deal breaker, you know what I mean? Because yeah. a lot of times when you call somebody and they ran out, they'd be like, man, I got extended without extended. Hey, listen, just extender, send it, you know what I mean? That's true. No, that, that's definitely true. And I actually didn't know the name of that pooling. Like, I always thought it was just pooling. But from reading actually one of the books that uh, you held up in the other episode, um, the series of it, the Blackwells, they actually call it, the, the, the term is hematometra. Which, I, which would make sense because a pyometra yeah. is a blood-filled uterus, hematometra is a blood-filled uterus. Yeah. So what it is is, so the, to give people the understanding, yeah. every four-legged animal has, it doesn't actually have a name, but it's like a speed bump right where the hips are. Mm -hmm. So there's like a blockage. It's like a dam that doesn't allow the, so it doesn't allow the blood to come out if the angle of the hips is different. So, you know, once you alter that angle of that hip, you know, down, now that now the water can come out. When it goes up, it blocks it more. So, I mean, it's you know, every every four-legged animal has that little bit of a, that's why sometimes when you do an AI, when you're pushing it in, you lift up just a little bit, you straighten it all the way back out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just gets rid of that, for lack of a better word, speed bump or hump. I mean, it's in a book. I've read it, and it doesn't actually have an, ex, you know, an actual name. But, um, and that's what they recommend that you pick up just a little bit, three yeah. to four inches, and then it whew, straight well, shot. That, that's kind of why I've been becoming a little bit more of an advocate for like, like TCI because of a conversation, and I don't even think you realized it because we were talking, right? And I was showing you when I was doing this TCI. I was like, "What did you think?" So on and so forth. And you're like, man, like she's got a lot of blood on like her walls, you know? And uh, you was like, yo, maybe we should like flush her. You know what I'm saying? And it made me start saying, you know what? Like maybe if I am going to do an AI or or let, let me rephrase, if I'm going to do an insemination instead of a surgical, maybe at least like, hey, use like a, a, like a TCI or something or some type of endoscope that allows me to, because there's a vet that's close to me that that's what they do. They'll do a visual in, uh, uh, they'll do a visual of the inside of the female before they do the breeding just to make sure everything looks good. So maybe that's yeah. something I'm going to continue to do moving forward. I don't know. It's just a thinking out loud kind of thing, you know? Well, the thing, the, the, there's a huge difference between a regular, a regular breeding, an AI 
trans cervical and surgical. They're all different. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what I try to tell people, a surgical might work well for five females in a row, but then the sixth female, she might have an auto inflammatory response that attacks that incision. So mm-hmm. anything that's, you know, anytime you cut the body, that's a foreign, it, it's a foreign body. So the body attacks it. So, you know, you have to be, you have to uh, account for that because that can happen where uh, a trans cervical, you don't cut the body. You're going in, you're putting it right at the base where the surgical, you're putting it in the ovaries yeah. and a trans cervical, you're putting it at the very base. Well, That's the best way. Well, that, that was the conversation we were having, right? So actually let's, 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 let's uh, dig deeper on that one, right? So we were having this conversation because in one of the books, it says that uh, when you do a TCI, you're essentially putting it in the same place as where a surgical would be done. And remember that conversation? And it was yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. like... Uh, so what they mean by that is it's in the vault. So yeah. you, know, you have to look at the cervix like it's a vault because once it opens, it can get in. But once it closes three days later, nothing can penetrate it. So as long as you get past that vault door... The semen is in the vault. Now, the difference between a, fer- uh, um, a, a, a trans cervical and a surgical is you're in the vault and at the actual locations you want to be at, which is the ovaries. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm going to put I- an image of what that looks like. In, in, I'm going to put an image in here so you guys can see. I'm going to use the image that you sent me, Chris. That was a great yeah. example. Um, so you can talk as if it's right there, like right gotcha. above. So, so the thing is, is a lot of people don't understand that there is a little bit of a difference. But when you're using fresh semen or chilled semen, you know, surgicals, they're a little bit overkill, just a little bit. I'm not saying that they're not warranted. I agree. I agree. Uh, I mean, there's some dogs that you have to do surgicals on, and you have to learn the hard way. Three letters, I mean, three uh, heats later, and you're like, man, dang, I should have just done a surgical the very first one they are some tricky females like that don't get me wrong yeah. but um so for me i just do regular trans cervicals or regular ais i used to do a lot of surgicals but i only you know for me i use only use surgicals now for frozen semen because frozen semen only lasts for 18 hours per the book we don't know exactly each dog is different yeah. you know the, the maximum life expectancy of frozen semen is 18 hours so, you know, you, I, 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 there was an article that I read by Dr. Emmanuel Fontaine that he said that dogs are actually in estrus for five days. Mm. They're actually breedable for five days. But the problem is the bolt door closes between two and three, mm. but they're still acceptable. They're still accepting semen. That's where surgicals come into play, that means- where your numbers are so high, the door is closed but they're still technically receiving semen. So that's why when you're using frozen, you want the door to be closed so the frozen semen doesn't leak out for lack of a better understanding. That makes sense. Yeah, because I mean- um, I, And just so you know, I've done frozen twice and I had 10 and 12 puppies. Nice. I mean, the so, thing is, like what I've even learned with frozen, because you know now being able to freeze my own semen on my dog, I don't have my tanks with me. They're over at the liquid nitrogen place. Um, is it also depends on like there's so many little minor things that people don't realize, even with just like frozen, and that's a whole other thing, but like even down to the products you use when it comes to freezing, because absolutely, I was there's two different methods, yeah, the French method, and there's another one where you put the egg yolk. And, ugh, yeah. I've done it, I actually did an experiment with a gentleman who did a uh, horse semen, okay. and he was like, he, he, he was honest with me, he was like, dude, I've never frozen. Uh, you know, dog semen. So would you mind bringing the dog two days in a row so we could see what process would benefit the dog versus, you know, cattle? And I was like, yeah, sure. And we did it two different ways. I think we did it two different ways. And it was the one with the egg. And then we did another way where he took it basically, you know, freezing extender. We spun it down, put the extender in it, spun it back down, put the extender back in it and froze it. And they work 20 times better that way. It's imperative. Then you got pellets, you got straws. I mean, there's so many variables in the frozen semen that people don't take that into consideration. A hundred percent. And actually, I mean, it it goes even down to something so minor as like with the frozen semen, there's different extenders that you're using, obviously, um, for centrifuging. 
for you know freezing the semen so on and so forth so just like regular extender like um some extenders work better with some dogs than others some one dog may be good on this extender the other dog may be good on this other extender so with that being said like i said the same thing applies to freezing so um yeah i just like like i said for me i mean, had... mm -hmm. the thing about freezing as well though not every dog freezes well I, yeah that's another thing a lot exactly. of you know, I had a dog that we froze him. Numbers look great, but the minute we defrost it, trash. Yeah. Never got anything ever pregnant in his life wow. off of frozen semen. Wow. So that's another thing. Um, if you're going to freeze a dog to keep it around for a longevity, because I have frozen semen that's 20 years old, yeah. um, they tell you to actually defrost a little bit to make sure that it's still viable. Because if not, you know what I mean? You're spending all that money because you spend like $100 a year storage. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got to think $100 a year times 20 years, that's $2,000 that I could have kept in my pocket. You know what I mean? That's true, especially for some semen that you couldn't have used or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I mean, the one that I had out in Cali at Butchko's office, <laughs> trash. And he's one of the best. Wow. Well, well so, so, so back to what we were talking about, right? Because I want to throw that image back up of TCI versus surgical versus AI. So um with doing the tci so that's what we had that conversation about right that it was a little confusing because it says you're putting it into the same place as a surgical but now looking at this diagram right because it's right above us how many inches do you really say that really is when you think about it as far as from the uterine horns um where a surgical would be down to bypassing the surgery you're just yeah at the opening of the uterus Bro, I would tell you that shit's only like an inch and a half. That's what I thought. Like, like I've seen them taken out of the body. You know what I mean? I've seen them yeah. taken out of the body. And when we used to do spays at the office, bro, that thing would be like this big. Like, you could hold it up. It would be tiny, man. Depending on the size of the dog as well, too, though. Don't get me wrong. So a larger animal has a larger one and yeah. a, smaller one has a smaller one. But they're not that big. I mean, it's not like comparing a fucking limo. <laughs> to a, a, a small car it ain't that big of a difference i mean they're not big at all honestly so what so, would you say to the people what would you say to the people that only get surgicals because of the fact that that's my chair making noise uh what would you say to the people that um say only get surgicals just because it's the highest percentage that she'll get pregnant that's their belief and I, you know, if you feel comfortable, I don't, you know, I don't know the difference. You know, when I was in Texas, the difference between a surgical and a transcervical, it was like 80 buck difference. So I know people who only do surgicals because superstition, like I have never missed with a surgical. I, I'm not going to stand in their way. You know what I mean? Do you? Um, but for me, anytime you put the dog under, you run the risk they did not wake up. Yep. So yep. for me, um, uh, I would, I prefer trans cervical or just regular AIs. And, but it also depends on my progesterone numbers too. Yes. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? And it depends on what type of semen I'm using. Am I using fresh semen? Am I using chilled semen? Or am I using frozen semen? There's a lot of variables, but if I'm just using dog A and dog B in the backyard, I'm just doing regular AIs. That's all I'm doing personally. I agree. Um, if I had ship semen, I wouldn't mind doing trans cervicals with chilled semen. Okay. Now, if I'm using frozen semen, I'm doing a surgical. Gotcha. That's my, I, I don't know, that's my protocol. That's how we do it here, you know what I mean? I've never seen anything, and I, I'd like to say that me and you like to read. I mean, like, <laughs> look at this book. I've never, I've never seen anything in all the books that I've read saying that, like, a surgical is so much more better than a trans cervical. I could be wrong, but I haven't, I've never seen any person, like any real scientific data saying that a surgical is the best way to go to get a female pregnant. Now. So there's a, there's a, uh, a few veterinarians that I use in Texas and they only do surgicals if it is necessary. Yeah. Seeing quality counts the number the progesterone numbers are too high 
They don't just let you walk in and say, no, I want a surgical. Why? Your dog doesn't, you know, doesn't necessarily need one. You know what I mean? Um, I believe that every scenario you have to play it by, by ear. And then that's how I would tell people. I, I would try regular AI the first time or transcervical. It all depends on the numbers and the quality of your semen. If you have amazing semen, uh, I wouldn't even worry about it. I, I've seen dogs, what they call a slip tie, where you basically hold an him in and she gets pregnant. You know what I'm saying? So if that can happen, I've seen dogs get dogs pregnant through a kennel, through an actual kennel. Oh, man. If, they, if that can happen, you know, we're overthinking it completely. You know what I mean? Well, I think this is just my speculation, right? So uh, for particularly in my breed, there's a lot of stud owners who are the ones that are pushing this narrative of surgical, surgical, surgical. You want to breed to my stud. You only can do surgical. That's all. So I feel like a lot of the narrative is being pushed from breeders like that. The way I, I would, would, and I would guess, cause I've been at the office and I haven't seen some top breeders send semen out and legitimately in this huge box, there was three CCs. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's it. Like I understand your dog's, you know, they <clears throat> they produce based off of size. Obviously, mm -hmm. a 15 pound dog is not going to give me 15 cc's. I understand that completely. Mm -hmm. But don't also don't be greedy and split semen. That I don't see that. I mean, I paid you for a service that day. You should say he's booked for the day. You know, yeah. if you're a masseuse, you can't massage two people at the same time. The only way in my opinion, I'm not really, I'm not notorious for splitting semen. I don't really do that. But the only way I could see that working is if the dog is giving an, uh, an, a really large amount. I mean, like if the dog is like, cause I have seen some dogs that are like in my breed that are, you know, uh, 40, 50 pounds that have thrown a billion. I've seen it. It's not common, but I've seen it. So if a dog can throw, you know, I would say anywhere between like six to like a billion, I would kind of be okay with splitting that because of the fact that you're still going to be within that, you know, 200 to 300 minimum breeding um, sperm count. But regardless, well, frozen, frozen is only a hundred million. No, I was talking about. No, no, no. I understand it. So I understand what you're saying. I do. I get what you're saying. Yeah. You know, if a dog spits out a million, why can't you split it? Well, one, how do you know you're splitting it evenly? You know what I mean? Because unless you spin it down and now you have a pellet of one and then you split half and half. I mean, I just think that for me, unless your dog is just absolutely that popular to where he's getting studded out five times a day. Yeah. I mean, then you, but the other thing is when you're studying a male out that much, you need to do something on your part as a stud owner to make sure that he can produce quality every single day. 100%. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that 1,000 because it, it, it's crazy when you think about it. You know, especially the big name stud owners, you know, we know what it's going for. I've seen stud fees as high as 5, 10, 15, 20,000 and up, you know. So to yeah. charge such a high premium, I mean, on their end, the bare minimum is providing good quality semen. Like that's like. I totally no agree with you. I mean, for you, if you charge anything more than $5,000 of stud service, I understand that over time you become callous to the fact that it's only $5,000. But for the person who's paying you $5,000, it might not just be just $5,000. It might have been, you know, a lot of overtime for him to make $5,000 to be able to pay you that one time for $5,000. And you send him a crap shot of semen. You know what I mean? In his hopes that he can make something that he wanted or make his money back in the investment. I understand that. But, you know, to me, that's a, it's a disrespect on your end like, if you're going to send semen, send good quality semen. If not, give the man his money back or make arrangements. Hey, look, I'll give you your money back. If it takes, then you can pay me. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll give you an example. Is like, I think, so, so yet again, perfect example. It, like, if I was in this, if I was in this situation, say somebody paid 5000 for a stud fee, I have a stud, he's at $5,000. Um, and I needed to split the semen. What I would do, you know, and yet again, it's also part of, not just being this big name breeder, but actually understanding real dog breeding. What I would do is I would uh, I would take the semen, the collection that I got from the stud dog. If I had to cut it, this is what I would do. I would, you know, go ahead and actually this is the photometer I was telling you about, bro. 
So I would go ahead oh, and right. yeah. So this this gives you the uh, the sperm count per ml, right? So I would divide. I would put the the, the semen in two vials, and I would test each vial to make sure that there's at least two to 300 million in each vial. And then I would reassure him, I would say, listen, this was your results. You know, uh, I'll show you a video on the, on the microscope, give him a whole semen analysis. And I think like, that's the least a stud owner can do if they're charging a super high premium is give them some kind of reassurance that this is what they're paying for, good quality semen. And that's what I would do, I would cut it, but I would make sure that each vial has enough and having the proper equipment I mean, hey, if I'm getting five thousand dollars a stud fee, you know, uh, a, a microscope and a, and a photometer ain't gonna cost me too much. So, and that's well, the other thing is, is uh, uh, now that we're talking about semen and we're splitting it, and that means you're spinning it. People understand that there's a certain level of spinning for each thing. Blood is one, semen is another. Know your numbers, man. Seven and seventeen. That's what it is for semen. You need to be at seven minutes and not to exceed seventeen thousand RPMs. Because once you go too fast, you're starting to kill it because that shit's hitting the wall too fast. You know what I mean? No, 100%. And that's why, like, it makes more sense now as to why, like, for, I know for horses, they sell, like, a cushion just for, it's like a cushion extender just for spinning down the semen so that it doesn't get all banged Damaged. Down. Yeah, 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 exactly. Remember, so, I was telling you that. But I said, look, 7 and 17 is where, because you have the, the one that you can twist and change yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I can see it. And that's why I told you, semen is 7 and 17, and I want to tell you, uh, blood is 8 and 40. You know what I mean? Yep. That's what we used to use. And I, I'm not a veterinarian, but that's the ones we used to use. The I'm, so. I'm a little crazy when it comes to blood. I spin it like, I spin at like 10K, like 10K for one minute. Surprisingly, though. Oh, that's good. Dude, you can yeah. be as high as 40,000. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I missed, yeah. I, I didn't hear what you said then. I thought you said, uh, I think yeah. uh, we would do eight minutes, or I think it was eight minutes at 40. Oh, so that's really yeah. fast then. Yeah, I think it was 40. Yeah. Oh, that's really fast. The fastest, like I said, the one I got is like 10K, which is, like I said, it'll, it'll, it does pretty decent. But, um, all right, we only got a few minutes left. So let's talk about something really juicy. Um, but we only got five minutes to do it. Maybe we'll right. back on to the next episode. Let's talk about, um, all right. Uh, why females don't take? Why won't a female take? Well, like, you have well, everything the thought process just... that goes into, like, someone's asking us, because I get this question all the time. My right. female's not taking, what can I do? What should I do? What should I try? So on and so forth. So my first question would be to them is, one, what was her numbers? And don't just tell me one number. Don't expect me to tell you she got pregnant because you bred her at a 12. I don't, but that doesn't, I need before and afters. You know, yeah. a lot of people I, I had um, when working at the veterinarian office or even doing our own progesterone. I know you've seen this a thousand times. Oh, she a 14. She'll be ready tomorrow. Oh, yeah. That don't mean jack shit. She could be a 14 tomorrow. I mean, me and you, we are personally in a situation right now where it's Friday. I tested a dog yesterday. She was a seven. I tested a dog today. She was a seven. Where it's Friday. The next time I can get semen is Tuesday. So me and you, I, we talked about this. I'm either effed. Or I might be really lucky and be able to get shipped semen on Monday. I don't know what to do either. Um, I will say this, though. Two, like, oh, oh, say what you're saying. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, two, semen quality. Yeah. Three, um, you know, is your dog healthy? A lot of times, you know, we're just breeding dogs because she's in heat. Okay, pay attention to her heat cycle. It's extremely long. Is it, you know, was it extremely short? Is it, is it extremely short? Her window of ovulation was probably shorter too because, you know, the thing is what people don't understand is heat cycles, they all are, they all, all of it meshes together. So if she cycles from the time she starts bleeding to the time she stops bleeding, it's three days. She probably ovulated. Ovulation window is probably only three hours, hypothetically. I'm just giving you an yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. But if she does a normal cycle, which a normal cycle is considered 21 days, she cycles normally, she has a normal cycle. So her ovulation is between three to five days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of, there's a lot of variables. And my first thing is make sure your female is 100% clear of everything. I can get a worm test, uh, make sure your numbers are right, test all the way through. Yeah. Find someone like yourself or myself that does progesterone and it's not $110 or $150 at the vet's office, say it's $50, yeah, yeah. or say, hey, listen, I'll leave the dog with you. Can you test her every other day? 
until she's ready. And then when you know that she's ovulated, make sure her numbers are doubling. And what I mean, what I mean by doubling is if you say she hit a 15 like she's supposed to. Now, per our test, our WANFO, she's ovulating. So if I test her tomorrow and she's a 17, she's not ovulating because she should double. And I don't mean per, you know, exactly double, like a 15, a 30, a 60. That's not what I mean. Yeah. If she's a 15, we should be somewhere between 28 to 32. We should see huge jumps like that. That means she's ovulated. And then you breed. Um, yeah, how good is your semen? You see what I'm saying? Did yeah. she absorb them? So at 28 days, find someone like yourself who can do sonograms very well and see heartbeats. And stop expecting us to give you a miracle and say, how many puppies at 28 days? Listen, at 28 days, you just want to see a heartbeat, my man. You know what's crazy, too? is, and I mean, this is just coming from, so uh, I had a woman um, over in Europe. She taught me how to do ultrasound. Um, and mm -hmm. she teaches vets how to do this and stuff. She's actually, the, she created the um, Association of Ultrasound. And she even said herself, she was just like, she was like, if anyone tells you they can give you a, de a definitive count especially when you're talking about the 30 to 35 day mark on ultrasound they're lying. They're lying. even at 30 days you can only see one side clearly the other side you can't even see that clearly so at yeah. that young you legitimately just want to see heartbeat but she's pregnant now if she's pregnant and she's absorbed before now you need to have a different conversation with your vet hey listen last time Make sure you have a vet that you can come, you know, have a good conversation with and it's not going to judge you. Hey, last time she absorbed, what is a course of action that we can do? And, you know, they can probably give you ready made or I'm just, you know. Yeah. And, and so these are things that you, there's so many possibilities, is what I and so do everything. This is what I tell people uh, if you have something that did not take, make sure you can at least have a educated guess of why she didn't take i did the numbers i can tell you every single one of them that was done and how they were done the semen it was good or it was poor it was great and how you did the insemination so then from there we can do a little bit more tests 100 100 percent. and like that's a whole thing like per, per, perfect example is i get people who say oh my female absorbed the puppies well, how do you know she absorbed the puppies did you confirm or are you just going based off of well she looked like she got big you know like realistically like exactly what you just said it's like you really kind of got to cross your t's and dot your i's you got to check your semen look under the scope you know what i'm saying does it look like three quarters of, of it is actually motile you know things like that not just kind of guesstimating oh well the semen got here we threw it in so you gotta yeah i i agree 100 percent. and actually just to go back because i know people are going to question us on when you mentioned just now like reg regimate for example right so they don't get it cons uh, yeah. misconstrued. Definitely, that's something like they would want to talk to their vet about because that's not something they would want to do if they have no experience, you know, using something. No, like no, that. no. You, that's why I said, hey, she absorbed her puppies last time. We, is there anything that we can do? And the words that you should be able to say to your vet is regimate or outrim is or liquid progesterone. It's at least oral give the dog um and just you know and have the conversation that you know some vets i will tell you this is the one thing that i've learned and i've been breeding dogs since 96 and large animal vets they're a lot more um forthgiving i mean not forgiving forthcoming with information because yeah. they understand that when you're dealing with large animals that's a livelihood for a farmer so the same thing with dog breeders, this is a livelihood to where they can survive and take care of their own selves. You know what I mean? Dog wise, you know, you, you know, you might have a full-time job, but everybody wants their dogs, their dogs, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you don't want to come out of your pocket every day for dog food. Dogs should pay for themselves. So if you can have a viable litter, you want to be able to have a litter. So these are the informations that we're giving people to help them for the next step. 100%. And that's what I learned is like... And that's why I like large animal pets. Yeah. what I, I, I agree 100% with that. And I feel like also what I learned is my experiences with more so the more rural vets, the more country vets versus your inner city vets who have yeah. a high overhead, 
who are, you know, more, it, it's just more in and out on the go. They're getting way more money from, you know, someone who's just bringing in like, you know, their cat for little nonsense stuff or whatever. But um, yeah. actually, the two Chris, questions I asked Vince. We actually we have less have, than one a minute. Yeah, we have less than one minute. So guys, um, make sure this is going to be a part two. So make sure on the next episode, we're going to still cover, you know, things as to why you're pregnant. Your female might not get pregnant. Um, appreciate you guys being on. As always, it's a pleasure. Um, we'll see you guys on the next episode. All right, guys. Uh -huh.